Cool. Um, okay, well, thank you very much, guys, and um, I'm excited to talk about transportation today. Um, maybe just before I start, just as a show of hands, just really interested, how many people here live in a household that has a car? Okay, excellent, most of you. And how many people live in a household with no cars? Awesome, you guys are great. Okay, so I wanna talk about why that is and what, what choices lead us to having a car. So this picture here is pretty representative, I think, of the world we live in today in Alberta. Um, <laughs> Trucks are very popular, but cars in general are, are very popular as a, as a transportation mode. And there's reasons for that, and it's because we've built our world around the vehicle. Uh, we, all our right-of-ways are built around vehicles, and in fact, some of the planning guidelines don't even include considerations of any other type of transportation except for vehicles on them. Uh, it's very hard to live without a vehicle, and I think many of you today, uh, obviously you guys are concerned about the environment, but you know how difficult that choice is because you live in a in a household that you have access to a vehicle, and you do it because it almost feels like a requirement to the world we live in. I think for transportation, often we focus on methods to get people out of cars, and we talk about public transit as the biggest one. And I think the realization I had maybe five years ago when I was thinking about started giving up my car was that doesn't cover everything you need to do. So public transit might get you to work, it might get you to school, it might get you to the main places you need to go. But what happens is you have maybe 10 or 20% of your trips where you need a car. And what happens is, if you need it for 10 or 20% of your trips, it's very inconvenient not to have it, so you buy the car. Well, you buy the car, now you've bought it. You have payments on the car, or you've bought it outright. You're paying the insurance every month, whether you use it or not. You're probably paying for the parking, or you have a parking spot, whether you, whether you, you drive the car or not. And so, it changes your transportation choices. Now, your choice is, it's very cheap to buy my car. I've already spent all the money to do it. I've already committed to the car. And it's actually cheaper than public transit, and it may be cheaper than other options, because all I'm paying for is the gas. And what that means is, if you only needed it for 10 or 20%, now you start to use it for all your trips, because it's very convenient, it's cheap, so why not use it for all of them? And that problem of needing it for a little bit and then taking it for all of it changes everything about our city. So a couple presenters talked about density, and one of the greatest resistance that city council gets around density is people don't want their parking to go away. That's what they're worried about. And so suddenly the city starts to sprawl because now I need a car to get around and I need a parking stall for it and the city doesn't want to put in more density because people get really angry when their free parking goes away. And so the car ownership actually drives so many problems with what we do. And it drives a lot of our GHG emissions. So in terms of transportation in the world, it's hard to guess, but it's about a quarter. It's the, one of the biggest sections of greenhouse gas emissions is transportation. And for us personally, it drives between 60 and 70%. So it's a huge driver of our impact on the environment. So I'm gonna talk just very briefly about some things that are starting to change it and go through some technologies which I think are helpful and, and maybe not helpful as we go forward. So the biggest one is car sharing. The reason I started a car share is because I didn't want to own a car and yet I needed a car sometimes. And so the whole point of car sharing is to provide people with an option to access to a vehicle for the 10% of trips they need it so they have the opportunity not to own a car. This dramatically changes your transportation choice. So now, it is cheaper to walk, it's cheaper to bike, it's cheaper to take the bus, and you only use a car for what you need because it's actually the most expensive option. So it totally changes the economics of transportation. And that will be a theme throughout all these, these technologies that I'm doing, is it changes the economics of your personal choices. In Edmonton, uh, just to give you a sense of the impact that we had, we did a little study with the city of Edmonton, we surveyed our members. Our members had given up, we estimate, over 1,000 cars taken off the road. So they told us they either hadn't bought a car, they'd sold a car, or, uh, or in some way given up a personal car. That's an incredible impact for just 80 vehicles on the road. And that takes all that takes off the space pressure that cars create and, and the driving associated with it. Other technologies are ride sharing. So this gets a lot of flack, but it's actually important to have options uh, for this. And so under the right conditions, it can actually help people get out of vehicles and not purchase them. Third is bike sharing. This one is often, uh, we're not so familiar with it, being in a northern climate, but it's taking the US by storm. And uh, billions of dollars are being invested in bike sharing right now, and China is actually leading the way with millions and millions of bikes being put out there. Particularly in large cities, it's the fastest, cheapest way to get around. Number four is transportation apps. So some of you might be familiar with Transit App, but it aggregates all these different alternative transportation modes and helps you pick the cheapest one and how to get around. I use it all the time for picking between taking the bus or taking a car share or different ways to get around. 
And the fifth one out there is driverless cars. And driverless cars offer to bring these different options together and again, give you a better chance to move, to create alternative options that mean you have an option that is better than owning a vehicle. So I think what we need to think about from transportation choice is there's many different options out there and what these choices can do can get us out of personal vehicles and that can change our cities and change our environmental uh, footprint of how we live. Thank you very much.